Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to another Godot tutorial video. In this video, I'm going to be making a random level generator in Godot, and it's going to be something like this. Okay, so I'm going to be using a simple walker or digger, as some people call them, to generate tiles in Godot here or generate a level like this. So this is what we're going to be doing. You can see I'm getting some tile flickering here. Uh, I wasn't getting that until I started recording. So this is what we're going, to, we're going to do. I want to make this into a series of some sort, but I don't have an exact plan for it, so I don't know how many videos there will be in this series, but I am planning on making some sort of, of a series, maybe to explore some different ways of doing random level generation. And this is what I consider to be one of the most basic forms of random level generation, so we're going to start with it. So let's create a new project in Godot. So we're going to come into here, select folder, gonna name this Walker Level Generation and create folder, create and edit. Okay, this is also going to be open source under the MIT license so you all can grab it on my GitHub page. I'll link to that in the description, including the resources that you'll need for this. So you're going to need a tile set and I've set this one up to be 32 by 32. I'm gonna grab that here. So I'm grabbing this tile set and I'm copying it into here. You'll want to click on it and I'm just gonna do import, turn off filter and re-import so it's nice and clean. We don't get any blurry blurriness on the pixels. So let's delete this here real quick. And we're gonna create a new scene. This will be our world. I'm gonna save this scene. And we'll go into the project settings and just set our window size so it's 1280 by 720. Close, save. We'll turn on snap and we'll set our snap to 32 by 32. Because that's the tile set size. So that'll get us an idea of how big each tile is going to be inside of this room. Save again. We'll add a new tile map node to our scene. And we'll come over to cell. Make sure you set this to 32 by 32. And we'll come into tile set, new tile set, and we'll add a new tile set. Select our random level generation tile set. Do new auto tile and select, turn on snap, select this region here. And we'll come into our snap options. They look good. Selected tile. We'll want to set our bit mask, auto tile bit mask to 3x3 minimal. And we can come to our icon. We'll select this tile for our icon. Bit mask. Now you've seen me do this before in other videos. So I'm not going to describe in great detail how to set this up. Uh, I'll probably actually fast forward this. But at the end of it, you can just pause the video and copy to make sure yours looks like mine if you haven't done this before. If you have watched my videos on how to set up a bit mask like, or if you, if you haven't watched my videos on how to set up a bit mask like this and the kind of pattern that is associated with it, I will have a video linked at the top of this video as well that you can click on to get access to that and see that. Okay, once your bit mask is set up like this, you should be able to come into your world here and draw and it will auto tile correctly with this. So, ooh, we're not, we're, something's messed up with our auto tile. We wanna make sure that it is correct. I missed something. I almost always do, especially when I'm recording. Let's see here, that all looks good. Oops, this should be up here. There we go, I think that was it. Come back into here. Let's do this. Make sure it's all correct. And yeah, that looks good. Okay, so 
what you can do now is we're going to come up to the top left hand side of our view and we're going to hold control and shift and click and then drag all the way down to the bottom right hand side and you can see I went just past the edges of the screen and created a big giant black square for our tile set now we can save so now we're going to be creating a new script we'll come into our scripts here do new script we'll call this walker and we'll do class name walker that just allows us to use this walker uh, without having to preload it or load it we can just use this class name to instance it and this is going to have a few variables and constants first of all let's set up our constants these are going to be the different directions that we can move in and this will be an array and we'll have vector 2 dot right vector 2 dot up vector vector 2 dot left and vector 2 dot down so that will just be a list of all the different directions we can go in then we're going to set up a position so var position and we can just set this to vector 2.0 for now we'll set up a direction we'll set this to vector 2.right starting off we'll set up the borders now this is important this helps prevent our walker from going outside of a certain area so we're going to have the borders here it's going to be a rect2 We'll have a step history. Step history. This is where we're going to store every single step that our walker takes. And then we'll have steps since turn. So basically we want to keep track. That's just that's just a little bit of polish to keep track of how many steps we've taken since our last turn so that we don't have super long hallways in our level generation. And so that's not necessary, but it's something you can you can add as well. And I like to do it. I think it looks nicer not to have super long hallways. So we're going to have an init function. And this function is where when we create our new walker, where we can pass in a starting position and uh, a new border. So we'll say the first thing we need to do is make sure that our starting position is inside of our borders. So we'll say assert new border, new borders dot has point starting position. So this will err right here if our starting point isn't inside of our borders. And we'll say position equals starting point and borders, well, step history dot append position, because we want our very first position to be inside of our step history. So we'll add that to our step history. Then we'll say borders equals new borders. There we go. That's all we need for our init function. Now we're gonna set up our walk. Well, we're gonna set up we're going to set up our step function next. Well, we'll set up our walk function because we're going to have a walk function that will take an amount of steps that we want to walk. But for now, just do pass. We're going to have a step function. This is for taking a single step. We can just do pass. And we're going to have a change direction function. So this will be every time we want to change directions. We'll just pass here as well for now. So we'll start with the step function because it's pretty straightforward. We'll just say var target position. This is a position we want to step to equals position plus direction. So we're going to get a target position and then we'll try and move towards that target position. If borders dot has point target position 
steps since turn plus equals one. So we'll take another, we'll, we'll add to our steps since the last time we've turned and we'll move in that, and then we'll move in that direction. Position equals target position. And then we wanna return true. This basically just says, yeah, we were able to take a step. Else, return false. No, we weren't able to take a step because that direction would go outside of our borders. That's what this says. If the target position is inside the borders, take a step. Else, return false because we can't actually go there. It's outside of the borders. Okay? So once we have that set up, we can set up our change direction function. So we'll come down here and we'll say steps since turn equals zero because if we're changing direction, then uh, we want to set we want to set that, we want to reset our steps since the last time we turned, because we're turning now. Var directions, make sure you have an S here, equals directions, capitalized, this is our array. And I think, I don't know if we have to duplicate it, we'll see. We'll do directions, make sure you have an S again, dot erase, direction. So what does this do? I'm gonna add a few returns here so it's not so low on my screen. What does this do? This removes the current direction that we're going from this list of all the possible directions to make sure that we don't ever go in the same direction that we were just going in. That wouldn't make sense, right? So it removes it from that list. So then we'll say directions.shuffle. So now we're shuffling the list because we're gonna pick a new direction. And then we'll say while not borders, borders dot has point position plus direction. Oh, we got to do this first though. We got to say direction without the S this time, because this isn't our list of directions. Direction equals directions directions with the s dot pop front so what does that do that grabs the very first direction from our list of directions so you could imagine that uh, if this list was shuffled it might be the up direction okay and then it sets our our direction equal to that but when you say pop front it the pop part also removes it from this list so so this list will get smaller each time we pop a direction from it. And that allows us to make sure that we don't check the same direction multiple times when we're checking to see if it's inside the border. So this will then check to see if we can move in that direction. And if we can't, then it will try to grab another direction instead. Direction equals directions dot pop front. So if we're unable to move in this direction, it will just pick another direction right after. And that's it, now we can set up our walk. So our walk, we can, it will walk for a certain amount of steps and then it will return the step history, basically a list of arrays that includes all the positions that we walked on. So we can say here, we can say for step in steps, and uh, the first thing we want to do is check to see if we want to change directions. So we'll say if rand f is less than or equal to 0 0.25 or steps since turn is greater than or equal to 4, change direction. So this gives us about a 25% chance to change directions and a 100% chance to change directions if we've gone for more than four steps. That means we'll never have a hallway that's longer than four steps. And uh, this seemed pretty good, but you can tweak these numbers if you wanna try messing with it, if you wanna lower these odds or raise this so you can have longer hallways.
you can mess with those numbers a little bit and they could be stored in variables up here too, consts maybe. The next step here inside of our walk function is to actually try and take a step. So we'll say if step. Now remember this will return true if we're able to take a step and false if we can't because it's outside of our borders. So we'll say if step step history dot append position. So that would say if we're able to take a step then add our new position it will actually take that step and then it will add our new position to our step history. Else change direction. We need to change directions because we can't actually take a step. There's, it, it would try and go outside the border. And then finally we just call at the end of all of this, so make sure you're lined up with the four here. We return step history. So this will return our step history back out uh, to whoever needs it and we can use that. So now we'll come to our world and we'll create a new script and inside of our world script we're just going to have the ready function. Well first we need to get access to our tile map actually, I lied. So let's do on ready var tile map equals dollar sign tile map. So I did this lowercase and this uppercase here. So then we get access to this tile map. And we can create our, our the borders that we want up here too. So var borders equals rect2. So now it's going to take two, well we can pass either four floats in to represent the borders or two vectors. So let's do the four floats, it's easier. So we'll start at position one and one because we want a one tile border at the edge of the room. And then we'll go to position 38 and 21. So why did I pick these numbers? I can show you, let's save here. We'll come back to 2D and we'll grab this convenient little tool up here called ruler mode in Godot. And this allows me to click anywhere in here and make measurements with this little ruler. Okay, and it will give me the pixels and it will also give me the units. Now the units is determined by our snap, which is 32 by 32. So we want our borders to be, we want a one tile border all around the view. So we want to go from here down to here. And sure, that's not quite a one tile border at the bottom, but I don't mind. It should be fine. So that gives us, you can see 21 units high and 38 units wide. And if you come back into here, you can see I did 38 wide, 21 high, just like that. So that gives us the border that we need. So if you were going to do a different size for your world, you could use that same ruler to measure and get the border. Or you could try and figure it out programmatically, but for the first video I decided to just use this tool and measure. You'd only really need to figure it out programmatically if you were going to have different sized rooms for your levels, but I'm not gonna be doing that. So let's create a new function called generate level like this. Now in this function, we can, we need to actually create our walker. So let's start by doing that var walker equals walker uppercase this time so lowercase first uppercase now dot new now we need to give it a starting position so for the starting position it'll be a vector two and i'm going to do half of the half of what we have up here so i'm going to do well it looks like i didn't do half actually but i want to do half so so half of this 38 is going to be, let's see, 19, is that right? And then half of 21, the closest we can get to is, we'll just do 11. And then for the, then we need to pass in the borders when we're creating a new walker. So we'll do borders, which we already set up here, right? So now that we've created this walker, we need to get a map from it. So we'll say var map equals walker dot walk. 
and we're going to walk for 500 steps. Once again, this is a value you can tweak. That basically just determines the size of your room, the size of your room, like how many steps it takes, obviously. So we're going to take 500 steps. Now that we have the map, we can get rid of the walker. So walker.qfree. So we can get rid of it. We don't need it anymore. And then we can do for location in map. So that will do, it will loop through each location inside of our map. We can say tile map dot set cell V. So that sets a cell in our tile map based on a vector. And the vector is going to be location. And what do we want to set the tile to? We want to set it to negative one, which actually means remove the tile or erase the tile at that point. Because in our world, we've already set these tiles. We actually want to remove the tiles from the world. That's how we're going to create our level is something like this as our walker moves around in the level, right? And so we'll do negative one that will remove the tile. And then at the end of the day, we actually need to update the bit mask region. So that basically just takes a region and it says, okay, we, we messed with the tiles in the, this region. So update the auto tiles so that it reflects the changes that we just made. Because if you don't do that, then it won't work. So your, your auto tile won't work. So we say tile, tile map the update bit mask region and the region we're going to have a start and an end so the start is going to be borders dot position and the end is going to be borders dot end that will get the end of our borders there and now if we run our game it will want us to select the level so we'll select the world okay so we got an error here step history dot append it looks like i have a typo here so you can see that it says non-existent function append in base array well that's because i spelled append wrong right so this error is telling me that that function wasn't a real function and i need to spell it right did i spell it right now it looks weird to me now it looks like i spelled it wrong again okay i did spell it right this time Okay, so we got another error message here. This is saying that the vector two and nil, op, uh, let's see, invalid operands, vector two and nil in operator plus. So that says that our operator for addition here has one of these can't be added. It doesn't know how to add them together. And that's because one of them is nil. And if we look at our direction, it's actually null. So our direction doesn't have a value in it. Now this is probably because when we set directions equal to this, uh, we're getting, let's see, directions.popfront. I'm pretty sure what this means is that our directions here, we can't just reference this constant up here. We need to actually duplicate it. So duplicate like this. That will make sure that we can actually um, remove an item from it because this is constant, right? So constants can't change. It's always going to stay the same. And so if we just set directions equal to the constant, then when we try and change it down here, it says, no, you can't change it. That's a constant. And we get a direction here of nil. So there you go. Uh, maybe you'll learn a little bit extra from my mistakes there. And now you can see it is generating a level. However, every time we run the game, it generates the same level. And that is because we need to randomize our seed, which determines how the random numbers are created inside of Godot. So inside of our ready function here, we can just call a function called randomize. And this will give us a new random seed every time we run the game. Now, what's the benefit of not having randomize, you might ask? Well, the benefit is for debugging. Uh, you, could actually, you could actually have a specific seed that ran every time, and then you could use that to try and debug situations like, oh, if I use this seed, then it creates this scenario that I need to try and solve. And so it's beneficial to be able to not have it be random every time. Exactly. It's sort of random, but 
not really. So, but we can call randomize here to make sure that it does it different. And then just for fun, we can add an input event here. We can say if event dot is action, just it is action pressed UI accept, which is generally the return key. Get tree dot reload current scene. That way we can reload the current scene. So we can run our game and then just hit enter over and over to generate new levels. And you can see we still sometimes get hallways that are a little bit longer, but generally when those happen, it's because it's actually walked one direction. So let's see if we can find one. This hallway looks really long, right? But probably what happened is it walked this way, came down, came up here, and then came back down and then walked some more. This one too has some hallways that look longer. And it's probably a similar situation. So the next thing on my list to do would be to potentially remove any single tiles because I found that these levels look quite a bit better if you remove any single tiles. So you can imagine if we remove this one, this one, and this one, it would look a little bit cleaner. And this is the type of le level generation that's used in games like Nuclear Throne. Uh, and I'm sure they tweak their algorithm a little bit to try and generate the best interesting levels they can. And I think if I do some more videos on this particular walker, I'll be tweaking the algorithm a little bit to try and make it look better and showing you guys some alternatives. So let me know in the comments if that's something that you would like to see. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. If you did, be sure and give it a like, uh, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell, and I will talk to you all later.